Shalom. Yes, guys, sorry. I just wanted to end it there. Otherwise, it's too long. I really want to finish this baptism. Get it all done, completed, posted. Then I know it's done and out of the way. <clears throat> Shalom, all. Welcome back. No problem, Candace. I think it's necessary to do this teaching. For we have brothers and sisters that do not know this basic principle. If you do not know the gospel of the kingdom, the wedding covenant, you are lost. There's no salvation for you, unfortunately. According to Paul's words, the apostles' words, and the Messiah's words. The prophets and Moses. The whole of the Bible. We believe all of it, not just some of it. Just like Paul. Acts 24, 14. I'm a follower of the way. Believing all things written in the law and the prophets. So I hope you guys are making notes, going through it. If you've not watched part one, two, and the live I just ended, where we're going to start now, you're going to be clueless. It won't help you even listening. Yes, ma'am, it is for those who know also, but I'm... Um, I always come out of my viewpoint is always that those who know do not need this bread because this is bread it's not meat um, this is the whole foundation of the truth and when we say we know God we are supposed to know this when we are saying we're preaching Christ crucified how because either either you're preaching a false Christ and a false gospel with a false spirit or you're teaching the true gospel just like the apostles did just like Paul did. this is what people miss they don't get it Saying that Paul preached a different gospel. What a heresy. Saying that the law is a curse and evil. What a heresy. That's blaspheming God. And that's probably why they won't come to see. Because they'll have seven spirits worse. Because when God calls you and shows you. You either accept it or reject it. Many are called but few are chosen. This is where we're going into now. The baptism. Which will be on the YouTube channel. It will be the fourth part the third part we just finished we're going into a new section about baptizing in the name of the father the son and the spirit proven with scripture the words of the messiah is always proven the word of god will not return to him empty or void it edifies what we know it gives us rich scriptures to reference yes hallelujah jackie but um <clears throat> You will always note, and people that know me for a while know this, I don't like spoon feeding people. And I really despise it because do you know what happens when you study the scriptures for yourselves? If you keep Sabbath, especially, and study on the Sabbath, God reveals this book is no longer sealed. It opens up to you and it's revealed what the truth is in such a way that you can discern every word in scripture. And once this is revealed, this revelation becomes your own. But when I tend to give people a lot of scriptures, it becomes Jason's revelation to you. It should be your own, God's revelation to you. That's what it means to seek Him. So you'll see in many of my teachings, I don't give all the references. I'll give some, I'll give you enough, I call it remez. I hint to something and I push you in a direction, go search it out. So that that revelation can become your own. And once it does, you will never forget it again. That's why it says, do not be a forgetful hearer. That revelation will stay for you for the rest of your life. You will be, your foundation is now on rock. It cannot be swayed by the wind. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just opening up. I think it's amber. Yes, it's amber. <clears throat> Very nicely. Thank you, Amber. Loud and clear. Awesome. 
And baptism was a practice to clean the body before entering the temple. Yes, but go and watch part one, two, and three. If you're joining now, you're probably not going to understand. Everything is covered. I covered the whole baptism to all the scriptures in this video. It's probably about 15 to 16 hours long, but it's worth it. So, the next topic that we are doing is why are all three required for baptism? Why is the name of the Father required? Because there is repentance. Why is the name of the Son required for that is for the remission of sins? Why is the name of the Spirit required? Because the Spirit is given to guide your knowledge and truth. Can you see it's got nothing to do with the Trinity? Okay. So, by that said, we're going to start off with John chapter 6, verse 44 to 45. Okay, John 6, 44 through 45. Just hang on. They say there's an echo. Oh, people are saying... I don't hear echo on, on when you are speaking. I don't hear an echo either. Is it on mine or is it... Let's echo here too. From my side. Um... I don't know how, how to fix it. Amber, don't you want to jump off and just come back in again? Yep, I can do that. Sorry, man. Can you hear me? You say try speaking now. Am I still echoing? Add Amber. I can hear you loud and clear. I don't hear any echo. I don't know about you guys. But are you guys hearing an echo? No echo. Okay, so why? <laughs> ah, yes. I'm sure Satan is fighting for this part not to come out because this part is a harsh part. It will realize, make you realize that you are living a lie if you're not in Jordan. Um, this is our teaching that's going to come now. Why are all three names required? The words of the Messiah. Wants to join and help Adrian if you are here or anyone else more than welcome to jump on. Now you are soft, Jason. Um, uh, no problem, Joshi. Anytime. Um, I don't know why I'm soft. I'm too dumb to figure this new technology out. If you want to ask me things, ask me in the truth and in scripture. But when it comes to technology, it's laughable what I know. Technology. All right, can yeah, everyone hear me now? Yes, I can hear you perfectly. I'm actually loud and clear. Okay. <laughs> 100%. Let's continue. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this technology. So, my question was, why is it necessary to be baptized in all three names and it's got nothing to do with the Trinity? 
and how does it work? So for this part, I know that you, I have assumption that you've studied the wedding covenant. I've got a video on YouTube. There's one on the TikTok, a short one, a lot of scriptures. And note that you've done a study on sanctification. Also a video on TikTok, 10 minutes long. No, it sounds long, 10 minutes is short time. If you have not done that, you might not understand where I'm going and what we're going to teach now. So if you need to give, just give me your hands and say, just hang on a second. Let's go watch the video on sanctification on my TikTok channel. Come back and we carry on so that you can have full understanding where we're going and what the scriptures are going to say now. And note that everything that we're saying and doing on here is scripture interpreting scripture, not leaning on our own understanding. For the art is evil above all things. Leaning only on the witness in scripture. So if we say that we believe all of scripture, we read all of it and lay it out and say this is the gospel of the kingdom, which is the wedding covenant, which requires repentance, sanctification, remission of sin to receive the spirit. The whole wedding covenant. In the same way that Paul, when he says, I preach Christ crucified, and you go to Paul's letters and realize, well, he's preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and he's preaching it out of the law of Moses and the prophets, his own words, that that is the gospel. If someone preaches the gospel of the kingdom without the law of Moses and the prophets, they're preaching a different gospel, a different kingdom, different Messiah, different spirit. They are preaching Baal worship. I know Christians don't like it, but it's true. If you're on here and you have not watched part one, two, three, the last one, where we, and where we're heading now, Rather not watch this. Go watch that first. This will be recorded on YouTube. You can watch this later. If you have not, do not have that foundation, this one I'm going to show you now. It's mind-blowing. It's bothering. You realize how many people do not have the truth. And it will, it will, it will shake you to the core if you realize what the Messiah is saying, how he is saying. And that salvation cannot be given if you're not obedient. If you have not repented to God for breaking his law, you're repenting to God for breaking his law. So that means if you're repenting for breaking the law, that means you still now have to do it. You can't repent for breaking it and then just go do something else. It doesn't work that way. This is the witness of the Messiah, the apostles, and you on. So please, go back, watch part one, watch part two, watch part three. This is going to be part four. If not, let me know. If you guys have watched the video of sanctification I have on here, we can continue, you can listen, it's fine. Also note that when you watch any of my videos on this platform, you always see on a certain topic that I'm speaking, there are red scriptures, normally three or four witnesses that pop up. Write them down, because that sanctification video that I'm showing you on, on the video leads you to the other scriptures to get you the full revelation. Right, so it's 10 minutes long, but if you read the scriptures and study it, it's five hours long. It's just compressed. Okay, so if you've done that, Happy we can go on. You work for Satan by being obedient to God, Willie Bird. Sure. Just like Satan deceived Eve by saying, break the law. <laughs> oh, you bald priests. Son of the devil, how long will you go to perverse the righteous ways of the Most High? Uh, Jesus is the Father. So the Father cannot die for the sins of the children. So God broke his own law and cheated the system because he could not beat Satan fairly. Willy Billy. Please, guys, be free to mute Willy Billy. Then I have time for nonsense, Paul, please. Okay, so, baptism. Why are all three required? Let's continue. John chapter 6, verse 44 through 45. John chapter 6, 44 through 45. Okay, no just one on. can come to me unless... Oh, okay. Sorry, Amber, I need to just... Someone reminded me of something. I must... I must... Uh, moderate this. I must just do something because I keep on forgetting. I just need to figure something out quickly, Amber. Uh, sorry about that. Um, she sent me a video on how to do it, but, but I can't remember how. Comment, flip camera, mirror, gifts, treasure, treasure, comment. Comments? No, I don't want to comment. Um, sorry, Amber, I'm just trying to figure something out. And 
letter L. Um, how do I do this? Panel grid, fixed layout, maximum number, allow request from viewers, allow request from followers. No. No, never mind. I'll figure it out later. I forgot how to do it. I'm too stupid with technology. Any case, let's start. John chapter 6, verse 44 through 45. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Okay, so if you've watched my videos on the Winning Covenant, you know this is I hammer on this and what it means concerning the Winning Covenant. That's why it's important to understand the Winning Covenant. But now we have to ask certain questions, right? No man comes to me except the Father which has sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up in the last day. No one can get to the Messiah unless God calls you and does what? Teaches you in his ways, because it says it is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught of God. Every man, therefore, that has heard and has learned of the Father comes unto me. You can only get the salvation or the remission of sins through the Messiah if God has taught you in his ways. Because you repent, then God teaches you what he loves and what he hates. Then only the Messiah can cover you for your sins, right? John's words, this is in the book of John and this is the Messiah, right? So, now, you, you, you'll hear, if you read on, just read verse, uh, John chapter 6, verse 65 says the same thing. Just read it quickly, Amber. Well, I'll read it, I'm there. And he said, therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me, the Messiah, except it was given unto him of my father. Remember the Messiah said, I kept those who have given me father. First you repent to God. God then teaches you his ways. Sanctification takes place. Then he hands you to the son for the remission of sins. There's not another option. You can't get the remissions of sins if you have not repented. And what are you repenting from? For breaking the everlasting covenant of God. You want to walk renewed in the covenant, right? So, people say, but no one gets to the uh, no one goes gets to the father uh, goes to the father except through the son. It's his example that gets you to the father. But he calls you first. He says, see, my Torah is everlasting. Okay. So God teaches you His law. His son shows you how to walk out the law. And once you walk it with an honest heart, a heart circumcision, because you repented, now God gives you to the Son for the remission of sin. If you know in God's ways, the ways He taught you, you cannot get the remission of sin. Let me prove it, right? So verse 45. So the verse 44, no one comes to me except the Father which has sent me draws him, and I will raise him up in the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught of God. Every man therefore that has heard and has learned of the Father, comes on to me. So we must hear and learn of the Father. What must we learn? God calls you and shows you His ways. For why? Remember what happens when we say it is written in the prophets? We have to go to the prophets to see what it says, right? So, why will God call us first? Go to Isaiah 54 verse 6. It's about the wedding covenant. So why will He have to call us? What's the reason for Him calling us? Isaiah 54, 56. 54, verse 6. Oh, verse 6. Okay. For the Lord has called you like a wife deserted and grieved in spirit, like a wife of youth when she is cast off, says your God. Okay. Why would he call us? Remember that God chose a bride for him at Mount Sinai? The 12 tribes. And because the bride broke his covenant, he divorced her. The bride was his wife, the wedding covenant. He divorced that wife. Now we are lost. Now the Messiah comes and he preaches the gospel of the kingdom. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent to who? His father, the one whose covenant you broke. Right? So now, he says, For the Lord, for Yahweh has called you as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit. 
Why is the woman forsaken? He divorced her. And the wife of the youth was his wife. He went into a cover, marriage covenant with her. When thou was refused, says Yahweh. Why was she refused? Because she broke the everlasting covenant. And God scattered her to all nations. North, south, east, west. The wedding covenant, right? So why will God call us? He has to call us back into repentance. Back to the one who's covered. This is the covenant. He calls the bride back because she was refused. She is no longer my people. The wedding covenant. Remember Hosea 1 verse 9 through 11 in the wedding covenant. I will call you Luami, no longer my people. That bride has to now come back. To God will call her back. Instruct her in his ways. So that we can get the remission of sins. So that we can walk renewed in the covenant. Spirit. Keep the laws. If he calls you and teaches you his ways. He says, remember what we read in John. It says, it is written in the prophets. They shall all be taught of God. And every man therefore that heard and learned of the Father comes on to the Son. Then only the remission of sin is given. First, heart circumcision, repent, go back into obedience. Your Father's law, you keep it. What He loves and what He hates, you understand this. Then the Son will cover your sin, right? So why will God call us first? Because the woman was divorced. The wedding covenant, which is the gospel of the kingdom. That's why we baptize the name of the Father. God calls us. He shows us His ways. We repent of our evil ways. Then in the name of the Son for the remission of sin. Then the Spirit for all knowledge and truth. Right? Now, quickly jump to Isaiah 54 verse 13 to 14. Isaiah 54, 20 through 40. I'm sorry. I, I, I couldn't hear that. Isaiah 54, verse 13 through 14. 13 and 14, got it. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. In righteousness you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression, for you shall not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near you. So God says there, and thy all the children shall be taught of God. Remember, John said, as it is written in the prophets, every man will be taught by God. In righteousness you shall be established. What is the righteousness of God? Torah. In his righteousness, his Torah, you will be established. You walk in his Torah, then you receive the remission of sins of the Son. That's why you go you see God and his righteousness first. Then all these things, remission of sin, everlasting life, comes into play. First, you have to repent to the one whose covenant you broke. Why else would you repent? What did Israel do? They broke the covenant. They did not walk in the law. For not walking in the law, it requires a repentance to the one whose covenant is. So you're repenting, saying, sorry, God, my forefathers inherited lies. I am waking up. Thanks for calling me, God. What an honor. Show me your way so that I can walk in it. Now he shows you his ways. You walk in it. Now you receive the salvation of the Son. Not the other way around. Okay? So, like we read earlier in John, it is written in the prophets that all shall be called of God, right? I cover this extensively in the wedding covenant. Go and watch it there. I just, it does all have to do with the wedding covenant. The wedding covenant is the gospel of the kingdom, right? Now, with that said, quickly jump to 1 John chapter 1, verse 4 through 10. One John one four through ten, and we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is a message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Yeshua, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So no, this sin is speaking about is 
the wedding covenant. Why did they sin? They broke the law and they sinned against God for breaking the law and he divorced them. So no one can say they did not sin for they are not in the covenant yet. They are divorced. They are scattered to all nations, right? But note here, it gives you that same order. First, God calls you. God teaches you his ways. He sanctifies you. You say, many are called, but few are chosen. You say, yes, I am of the few that are chosen. Yes, God, your ways are righteousness and truth. They are perfect. I will walk in them. Then only comes the remission of sins through the Son. There's no other way to it. This explains it again. Let me read it to you. Verse 7 in 1 John chapter 1 verse 7. Oh, verse 1 John chapter 1 verse 7. But if we walk in the light, what is light? Torah. Watch my video. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, the Messiah, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of the Messiah, his son, cleanses us of all sin. If we walk in the light, we know that God is light, right? God is the Torah. In the beginning was the Word, the Torah. And the Word was with God, the Torah. And the Word was God, the Torah. God is light, right? Torah is light. The Torah is His image, what He loves and what He hates. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, who is in the light? Our Father is light, right? Our Father who is in Him, right? We have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Yeshua, His Son, cleanses us of sin. See, you have to first keep the Torah or walk in the light so that the blood of the Messiah can cleanse you of your sin. That's why when it says God will, you don't get to the Messiah unless God calls you first, teaches and instructs you in His ways, then the remission of sin. Then you get access to the Son for the remission of sin. John confirms it. What, do we, what, what does this church say today? No, 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 you only, you only have to believe. Believe in what? Believe in what? If you say believe in the Son, walk like He walked. Adopt His witness. But you can't confess Him with your mouth, but in your heart deny Him. Faith without works is dead, my dear friend. Or you're reading partially, you're reading a different gospel. So note what John is saying. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, Yahweh is light, the Torah is light, we have fellowship with one another. So if we walk in the light as God is in the light, because God calls us and teaches in His ways, in His light, we have fellowship with one another. How do you love your brother? By keeping the law. How do you love God? By keeping the law. And the blood of the Messiah, His Son, cleanses us of sin. Only if you walk in the light, His blood can cleanse us. Just like we read in John, right? If we say that what we have no sin, we are deceived by ourselves, and the truth is not in us. What is the truth according to Scripture? Let Scripture define Scripture. What is the truth? We've got teachings on it. The Torah, the law, is the truth. Your law is truth and righteousness. Right? If we confess our sins, remember what we said, repentance to who? Yahweh. Now you see that order coming in. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. If God calls us and teaches us, and we realize, yes, we broke your law. Because why, 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 what are we repenting of? We're repenting of breaking his law. That's why repentance is required. What did the people do? Why were they scattered? Because they broke the law. So, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, repentance, baptize in the name of Yahweh, sanctification. You guys watched the video, right? He is, uh, if he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. First repentance, then the Messiah. Name of the Father baptism, name of the Son. Can you see it? First repentance to the Father, for it's his covenant you broke. Then you receive the forgiveness of sins. Then the blood of the Messiah will cover you. Once again, the name of the Father, the name of the Son happening there. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So you baptize in the name of the Father because it's His covenant. Then you get the remission of sins. He's, he's faithful to forgive you. That's why He sent His Son for the remission of sin. For He loved the world. He sent His only begotten Son. Again, that same order. But again, note, God calls you. Teaches you in His ways. You accept it. Then you receive the remission of sin. 
You can't have the remission of sins if you do not know what you've sinned against. Why? If you say you did not sin, you call yourself, you are a liar, you also call God a liar. Why, why did you sin? The covenant was broken. What is sin? Transgression of the law. That covenant was broken, people. You are the bride that was scattered. You must repent, turn back to your Father who is in heaven, so that you can, He can teach you. He can sanctify you of your evil ways. Renew your mind. Wedding covenant. Remember, it's in there. Then you receive the remission of sins. John also speaks about it. Right? If we say that we have no sin, we make him a liar and his words are not in us. If we say that we don't have to repent to Yahweh, we are lying because we can't say that we have not sinned because he divorced us. It's the wedding cover. So he's making sure, yeah, no, don't say that you have not sinned for you are stricken and grieved. You are the woman that are divorced. Why did he divorce the woman? Because they sinned against his everlasting covenant, the Torah. So if you have to repent, you're repenting to what? For breaking the law. The law is not done away with, my friends. It's still there. The words of the Messiah are all his truth. So, with that said, there again we see repentance, name of Yahweh, to receive the remission of sin, the Messiah. No one gets to the Father unless the Father has called you in his ways, then you get the remission of sin of the Messiah. This is all in the wedding covenant. So I'm only covering it briefly. I just want to cover the name of the Father and name of the Son without explaining too much. So now go to 1 John chapter 2, verse 26 to 29. 1 John chapter 2, 26 to 29. Okay. I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you, but the anointing that you received from him abides in you, and you have no need that anyone should teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about everything, and is true, and is no lie, just as it has taught you, abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink from him in shame at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who practices righteousness has been born of him. Okay. So there's a lot yeah, right? But Amber is reading slowly. Are you catching the name of the Father, the Son, all of that, that you cannot get to God? It's all about the wedding covenant or the gospel of the kingdom. Let me break it down quickly. And I will reference one or two things, but go study this out for yourselves, right? These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you, those who are going back and forth by every wind, right? Especially those who are being sanctified. Because you, God is teaching you, but you're not yet steadfast in what he's teaching you. But the anointing which you have received of him abides in you. You need not that any man teach you. What anointing? Here we see the anointing of the Spirit. Because what will the Spirit teach us? To walk in God's judgments and do his commandments. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26 to 27. This is in part 1, 2, and 3. You can go watch it, right? <clears throat> um, but that the anointing which you have received, why did they receive that? Because they repented to God. They received the remission of sin. Now they have the anointing of spirit that does what? Listen carefully. But the anointing that you have seen abide in you, that you need not that any man teach you, but the same anointing spirit teaches you in all things. The spirit brings you to understand. It. And is truth. How do we know what is truth? The Torah is truth. What does the spirit do? It teaches you in God's ways. According to God's own words. Not according to a Christian's word. God's words. And there is no lie. And even as he has taught you, you shall abide in him. The Spirit teaches you to walk in God's ways. So now you see that third part. Repentance, the name of the Father, the name of the Son, that anointing. What happens with the anointing? We'll read it now. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. We must have confidence. Why? Because we're walking in righteousness. You'll see why now. Verse 29. If you know that he is righteous, the Messiah, 
you know that everyone that does righteousness is born of him. If you know that the Messiah is righteous, he kept the law. Everyone that does righteousness, keeps the law as he kept the law, is born of him. Have to do it. Not the church gospel that says works are evil. No, 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 you can't do it. No, 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 the gospel of our Messiah. Works are required. Your salvation. That's why it says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Work is required. God shows you what he loves and what he hates. He calls you. You realize that you've broken the cup. Repent because you broke the law. Then you baptize in the name of the Father for repentance, the baptism of John. Baptize in the name of the Son, the remission of sins. To receive the anointing of the Spirit who will do what? What will he do? It? Teach us in all righteousness. Because what are the attributes of the Spirit? The Spirit will cause you to keep the law. So this anointing yet speaking about something very important. But the anointing which you have received. So these people went through all the phases. They repented in the name of the Father. They have received the remission of sins so that they can receive the anointing of the Spirit who will teach them into all knowledge and truth. Now, with that said, quickly, see what the disciples of God will be taught you. So quickly go to Isaiah chapter 8, Amber. Okay. Just read verse 20. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 8, verse 20. Uh, to no, the teaching 16. and to the testing. First. Oh, six. 16 first, I think. Okay. So 16 through 20. And I just verse 16 quickly. Bind up the testimony, seal the teaching among my disciples. Just repeat, you broke up. Oh, sorry. Bind up the testimony, seal the teaching among my disciples. The Torah. Bind up, if you say you are sealed by the Spirit, like he says here, but the anointing which you have received, if you say you, if you, say you have been anointed by God, or you are sealed by the Spirit, it says, bind up the testimony, seal the Torah amongst my disciples. If you say you have the Spirit of God and you're sealed by the Spirit, it does not line up with the prophecies if you're not keeping the law. Then you are sealed by the lying Spirit because it has to line up with the prophecies. Bind up the testimony. Seal my Torah amongst my disciples. If you are a disciple of God, you keep the Torah. This is what he's speaking about in 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. But the anointing sealed the Torah, the Spirit, which you have received abides in you and you need not that any man teach you because the spirit will lead you to knowledge and truth the spirit will cause you to keep the law and the commandments part one and two it's in there go watch it right then just verse 20 quickly amber to the teaching and to the testimony if they will not speak according to th this word it is because they have no dawn to the law and the testimony. If they do not speak according to these words, the law and the testimony, it is because there is no light in them. Question. If there is no light in someone, what is in them? Darkness. Right? People today have taken the light for darkness. It's for light. Preaching the opposite. If someone ever, listen carefully to what I'm, and I'm warning, do not be deceived. If someone ever comes along and does not preach according to the law, and the testimony of the Messiah, you will be deceived. You will put up with it and you will be cursed for that. Because if someone comes and preaches a different Messiah, the testimony of the Messiah, or a different gospel of a kingdom, a gospel, the law, or a different spirit, you will be accursed. So if there's no light in them, it means the spirit can't dwell in them. What are they walking in? Darkness. Why are we listening to the Baal priests? 
We're paying them to tickle our ears when they contradict every scripture front to back. They preach a trinity. They preach lawlessness. They preach that the Father himself came die, down and died for your sins, breaking his own covenant, meaning that he could not beat Satan fair and square. He had to cheat the system. Making God lesser than he is. How sad. How sad. Right? So we are in John when he speaks about, but the anointing which you have received of him that abides in you, you need not let any man teach you. Why shouldn't a man teach them? Because God has taught them, so they repented. God has sanctified them, right? So they are baptized in the name of the Father. Then they get the access to the Son for the remission of sin. To receive the anointing of the Spirit that will teach them in all knowledge and truth. That's why it says, bind up the law and the testimony amongst my disciples. If you are a disciple and claim to be a disciple of, of God, a brother of the Messiah, what would you be preaching? The law of God and the testimony of the Messiah. Because the testimony is the law. Hence, if you pro just in there, if you go to Revelation, in the end time, Satan is going to come and prosecute God's bride, right? Um, in Re Revelation 12, 17, it says the following. And Satan was angry at that woman. What woman? God's bride. And went to go away, make war with the remnant of the seed, the daughter of Zion. Those who keep the commandments of God and the witness of the Messiah. So if you're not doing, keeping the commandments of God and the witness of the Messiah, Satan will not prosecute you because he's your daddy. He won't prosecute those who are obedient to him. He's already bought you. You are the children of Satan. He doesn't prosecute his own children. He prosecutes the children of God, the one he's opposed to. I hope you're catching what I'm saying, right? Now, <clears throat> then, and now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence not to be ashamed in him at his coming. Why? If you have the anointing of the Spirit, you keep the law, you will not be ashamed. You can approach the throne with boldness. But listen carefully to verse 26, 29 again. If you know that he is righteous, was he righteous? Did he keep the law? Oh, yes. You know that everyone who does righteousness is born of him. You can't say you are born again. I'm a born again Christian. I preach Christ crucified. But you don't do the law, the righteousness. You don't follow the image of the Messiah. You don't walk in his ways. It says, be doers of the law and not hearers. One who does righteousness is born of the Messiah. Now you have truly adopted his witness. You are truly striving to walk as he walks. Simple, logical. A child could understand this. But going to explain your trinity to a, to a child, I dare you. <coughs> the child will laugh at you. Isn't it strange that children are smarter than we are today? Because they are still logical. They still have logic in their minds. So, now, here's one of the most important scriptures. Peter answers so beautifully. And it's always speaking about baptism in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Sanctification for the remission of sins. Right? He always speaks like that. Peter speaks beautifully. He understands this gospel clearly. Right? Amber, I'll be reading this, right? It will be First Peter chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. And you'll see in my video of sanctification, people tend to watch halfway what and stop. If you want the nuggets, they are always at the end when I say Aramis. This is at the end of it. Because it's the most important scripture regarding all of this. You'll see the hints when Peter speaks. He speaks beautifully. Let me read it to you. First Peter chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. To the elect, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. What foreknowledge must you have? God calls you. So you must have known of God because he called you. The elect, according to the foreknowledge, God calls you and teaches you his ways, just like we read earlier. The elect, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. So repentance to the Father. Through sanctification of the Spirit, remission of sins, or, 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 or what's it sanctified? You purify, you repent. The Spirit is clean, the new heart, right? Unto obedience 
and sprinkling of the blood of Yeshua the Messiah. See those three steps? The elect according to the foreknowledge why God calls you. So you have to know about God. Through sanctification of the Spirit, when God teaches you, He sanctifies you, shows you wrong from right. You then repent and walk in God's ways. Then only, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of the Messiah. Then only the blood of the Messiah can cover you. What does the church teach? Opposite. Everyone are welcome. Come as you are. But it doesn't say come as you are. It says come as filthy as you are. But clean yourself. Baptize. Repentance. You gay? You can come to God if you are gay. God want to come to God, He will teach you. What will He teach you? That gay is an abomination. He will show you His ways. You then repent. And once you repented, then only you receive the blood of the Messiah. Then only that sin is forgiven. Peter makes it very clear. I'm reading again. Listen carefully. The elect, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. Point number one. Through sanctification of the Spirit. Unto obedience. The Spirit will cause you to be obedient, walk in God's ways. Once you walk in His ways, unto obedience. And then the sprinkling of the blood of the Messiah. Then the forgiveness of sins. The church sees the opposite God, gospel. The church is opposed to Peter. Yet the church claimed that Peter founded them. But they are 100% directly opposed to Peter. Not realizing what they are saying. And I know to some people, if you are new, a lot of what I'm saying makes sense. But it's the first time you hear it. It's new to you, but it's not new. It's old. You just forgot to do it. We've been deceived. Satan was our daddy for a long time. We sometimes do unrighteousness, but we have repented. Now come to truth. Right? <clears throat> blessed be the God, verse 2. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord, Yeshua the Messiah. Does our Messiah have a God? No, oh, yes. That's why God calls you, baptized in the name of the Father. Repentance is required. Sanctification. Right? Become obedient to that sanctification. To receive the remission of sins and the anointing of the Spirit. Right? Peter makes it very clear. That's why he states it in this way. But you'll see, 1 Peter chapter 3 does exactly the same thing. Let's go read. And I'll also be reading this one. They are short. <coughs> 1 Peter chapter 3. Oh no, this is a long one. Well, you have to read it first and I'll come back and break it down. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12 through 22 i'll come back and break it down all right okay first peter 3 12 through 22 for the eyes of the lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayer but the face of the lord is against those who do evil now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good but even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled, but in your hearts, honor Messiah the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect having a good conscience so that when you are slandered those who revile your good behavior in messiah may be put to shame for it is better to suffer for doing good if that should be god's will than for doing evil for messiah also suffered once for sins the righteous for the unrighteous that he might bring us to god being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey, when God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Yeshua Messiah, 
who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. But I was just checking at the power so I can switch the generator. But someone that's got solar panels or something there that's got power. It's not the power that's back. Because the generator is making a lot of background noise here for me. So first Peter chapter three verse twelve. For the eyes of Yahweh are over the righteous. Remember, if you know he's righteous, you have to do righteousness. What is righteousness according to scripture? Torah, the law. God's righteousness. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Unrighteousness breaking the law, righteousness keeping the law. Remember that God cannot hear the prayer of sinners, confirming that we are in Peter again. John speaks about it also, right? <clears throat> so God meets those who do righteousness with joy. Those who keep the Torah. Who repent and turn back to him he meets them with joy because he will not suffer those he will he doesn't want us to perish he wants us to repent and turn back to him the wife was divorced was thrown naked on a rock that wife that he divorced must repent so god does not hear the prayer of sinners that's a whole other teaching i've got a video on it as well way down hold here right so let's quickly go see what the prophets say about this let's confirm this with the prophets right go to isaiah 64 verse 5 to 8. Isaiah 64, 5 through 8. Where are you? There you go. Load. Okay. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness, those who remember you in your ways. Behold, you were angry and we sinned. In our sins we have been a long time, and shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. But now, O oh Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Mm. So yeah, it's what we just read in Second Peter, the verse 2, in summary. Right? When these apostles are writing, they're writing with the assumption that God has taught you. <laughs> because listen to Second Peter. For the eyes of Yahweh are over the righteous. Right? Remember we read earlier, he, he, if you know he is righteous, you will do righteousness, then you are born of God. And his ears are upon their prayers, but the face of Yahweh is against them. That you right? God does not hear the prayer of sinners. Now listen what the prophets say about this. Right? What we just said. You meet as them that you, you meet him that, what's it? Thou, this language, so you. You meet him that rejoice. With rejoice and works righteousness so he meets you who works righteousness with joy those who remember you in your ways the ways of god the torah they return they say ah where's this god who brought us out of the land of egypt those who remember remember you in your way behold you are wrath so god is angry right for we have sinned god has divorced us we have sinned right we went through this earlier in those his countenance and we shall be saved. How will we be saved? So God loved His Son. So, so God loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son. But repentance is required first. But we are all as an unclean thing. No. Works of Cain. Watch my video. But we are all as an unclean thing. And all our righteousness are as faulty rags. So when the New Testament says about our righteousness being faulty rags, not speaking about the law, 
who's just told you that he rejoices those who keep righteousness the rule. But our imagination, we want to serve God in the way we want to serve. That is like filthy rags, like an unclean thing. Right? Because it says there, <laughs> uh, in those who cut this, but we are all as an unclean thing. All our, not God's righteousness, our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf. And our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. And there is none that calls upon his name. Repentance, the name authority, baptized in the name of the Father. None repenting, none turning back to him and his righteousness. Right? And there is none that calls upon his name. Um, that, don't know what that word is, up himself to take hold of him. Oh, that stretches himself up to take hold of him. There is none that want to repent. Because we want to do our own righteousness. We want to worship God in our own way. Just like Israel of old thought they were doing God a favor, building a golden calf in their own way. Thinking they are doing God a favor. Happening in the church today. They want to love God in their own way. When God has given us an instruction on how to love Him and how to walk out righteousness through His Son. Right? Um, so there you see, there is none that calls upon Him name. There again, remember in the first teaching we went through authority, what the names mean. Authority, the name of the Father, means repentance back into His covenant. But now, O Yahweh, thou art our Father. So who's our Father? Yahweh. We are the clay, and you are the potter, and we all are the work of your hand. It tells you, who's our Father in heaven? Yahweh is our Father. We must return back to Him. This is what is required, right? Because He says there in verse 1, You meet Him with joy that works righteousness. Does righteousness. Right? The prophets confirm it. Okay. So now verse 13 in, in, in um, uh, First Peter chapter 1. Verse 13. <clears throat> and who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? Who will harm you if you follow that which is good? What is good according to scripture? Think about it. We'll go and read scripture. What is good? Who is asking question? Who will harm you if you do that which is good? Because God protects them that work righteousness. Just read it. Right? Just go to Deuteronomy 12, verse 28. Deuteronomy 12, verse 28. Be careful to obey all these words that I command you, that it may go well with you and with your children after you forever, when you do what is good and right in the sight of the Lord your God. What is good according to scripture? What is Peter saying here? Because he's saying here. And who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? The Torah. We just read it in Deuteronomy. Say a second witness, Psalm 37, verse 3. Psalm 37, verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. So if you can read that in Psalms, trust in the Lord and do good. What is this good according to Psalms? The Torah. You will walk in the land. What must you do to walk in the land? You must keep the Torah, people. The gospel of a kingdom, hence the Messiah, preaching the gospel of a kingdom. Repent, for the kingdom is at hand. Repentance is required. Repent to the one whose covenant you broke with, baptized in his name. Repentance, walk in his ways, so that you can receive the remission of sin. Right? Just go to Micah chapter 6, verse 8 through 9. Third witness. Micah 6, 8 through 9. He has told you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. The voice of the Lord cries to the city, and it is sound wisdom to fear your name. Hear of the rod and of him who appointed it. 
What does God require of you but to do good? Just told you in, in, in the HNM, the law, do good, righteousness. So he protects those who do righteousness. He meets those who work righteousness with joy. What does the church say? No, you can't keep the law, you're cursed. Who is their God? Satan is your name. Right, carrying on with First Peter, just verse 16 quickly. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you, as evil doers, they could create groups and go in life and tell the people how evil we are for just obeying God. Isn't that sickening and insanity? Saying that if you keep the law of God, you are cursed. They are saying if you are obedient to God, uh, you are doing wrong. This is what they are saying. Listen, no, nothing new. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you, of evil doers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse you in a good conversation in Christ. So I have, you, you'll see, I've spoken to a South African guy. I don't want to mention their names if they are not yet. The videos on my YouTube regarding a good conversation. And what do they do afterwards? They can talk smack about you on a line. Even though you disproved everything they said, they look like fools. Why? Their pride is still in the way. They have not repented. Remember teaching one and two? They repent. But not to me, says Yahweh. Who are they repenting to? To the Son. You did not break the covenant of the Son. It's not His covenant. You broke the covenant of the Father. You've made the Son your God. In actual fact, what I said in the other teaching is you've made the serpent in the desert that was sent as salvation your God again. And you are warned not to do that. John 3.14 as this Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. The serpent was sent as salvation for their sin. The Son was sent as salvation to repent to the one whose covenant they broke, the Father, Yahweh. Who are they repenting to? God says, they repent, but not to me. Remember the teaching, part one and two? I'm not going to go into it. It's in the teaching. You can go and watch it. <coughs> Right? And um, verse 18. For Christ also has suffered for us once for our sin. Once. Do not repent and then live in your sin. If he died for your sins and you repented and then he steps into for that sin, he once suffered for that sin. Don't trample him on the foot. Don't crucify him over and over again. That's not repentance. The just for the unjust. That he might bring us to God. Did you know that when the Messiah comes down in the kingdom, when he sits on the throne of David and rules over Israel, after that, what does he do? God will tabernacle with us again. The Messiah will be there as a mediator. We'll be living in tents. And God will tabernacle with us again. Then, what does he do? He teaches us and he brings us back to God. And after that, he hands this kingdom back to his father. He brings us back to God. We can now be in God's presence. See Him as He is. We'll be holy, just, and true. This is what needs to happen. That's the gospel of the kingdom. That's the wedding covenant. <laughs> in any case, <clears throat> verse 20. <clears throat> which sometimes were disobedient when once the long suffering of um, God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing, wherein few. That his eight souls were saved by water, their baptism. <clears throat> the like figure whereunto even baptism does also now save us. Not the putting away of the by the putting away of the filth of the flesh, repentance. If you ate pork your whole life, repent. Stop doing it. If you broke the Sabbath your whole life, repent. Start keeping it. This is the whole witness of the Messiah. I'm just using those as examples because they're the ones people argue about the most. <clears throat> but the answer of the good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Yeshua, the Messiah. The resurrection confirms that the Torah is true. Do you know why? Because the Torah said, if you do this, you will live. Did the Messiah break one of them? No. By not breaking it, he could not be held in show or in hell as christians call it meaning that there was no one to accuse him 
He has to be risen by God's word, confirming that the Torah is true. And then giving us the pathway to salvation. Became an author of eternal salvation for everyone who obeys him. Are you hearing the gospel? <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> obedience is required for the spirit to live in you. Obedience has always been the key. Repentance and being obedient to that what God just taught you. God can't teach you his ways and then you're disobedient to what he's teaching you. Because that is where it says, many are called but few are chosen. Many people get shown this, but they reject it. Why? Sports on the Sabbath. They, they just don't want to keep a Sabbath. Oof, how, how beautiful. They say they walk in the Spirit. But when it comes to things of the flesh, they can't deny it. They have to eat their pork. God forbid, don't take my pork away from me. Really, is your faith so small? But in any case, obedience is required for the Spirit. Just quickly go to Acts. Chapter 5, verse 31 to 32. Acts 5, 31 to 32. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. Acts Cornelius chapter 10 is a Gentile. He was scattered. He's part of the divorced, the lost sheep. He's a Gentile. He becomes obedient. Then the spirit is given to them. He is a God-fearing man. But, right? Him as God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. He sent as salvation, as the serpent in the snake formation. Yeshua is sent as salvation by God. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. For to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. John goes before him, preaches repentance. The Messiah says, repent for the kingdom is hand. People repent, then they get the forgiveness of sins of the Messiah. Name of the Father, baptism. Name of the Son, baptism. Listen now, the third spirit. Name of the Father, Son, covered in verse 1, uh, verse 31, read verse 32. And we are His witnesses of these things. And so also the Holy Ghost, the Spirit, who God gives to them who obey Him. Obedience is the key. Repentance to God, become obedient to His ways. Then you will receive the Spirit. There is no other way in Scripture to receive the Spirit. Everyone that does not keep the law, does not have the Spirit of God, does powers and by the witness of Satan, by Balaam, just like the two magicians we read about here. The magicians did all of these works of Satan, and they rebuked him. said, why are you children of the devil? How are you doing this? By Baal. The Messiah confirms this in Matthew 7, verse 21 to 22. We covered this already. But listen again. Him has God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. So he's a savior. God sent him as a savior. For to give repentance to Israel and the forgiveness of sins. So repentance, name of Yahweh. You repent to Yahweh, whose covenant you break. For the forgiveness of sins, the name of the Messiah. Baptism in the name of the Father, the Son. And we are his witnesses of these things and so is also the holy ghost or the spirit of god right the ruach HaKodesh, who god has given to those who are obedient repentance sanctification washing away of sins the name of the son spirit is given to those who are obedient the blood of the messiah cannot wash you clean if you are not obedient question is any of this my own opinion scripture question do you believe the scriptures do you believe the count of x thing go watch it i've got a video on it it's called are all foods clean there are a lot of nuggets in there a lot of questions i ask that i post scripture go seek it out that's a whole different level of obedience that's happening <clears throat> question can the spirit be given to those who are not obedient no, for these guys that went and 
did the wonders and signs and the people thought it was the signs of God like we just read in the previous teaching. They did all these wonders and signs and then he wants to buy this gift to do the spirit. Why? And they tell him, repent. Because you have not repented, you can't receive the spirit. You're doing the miracles and powers by your sorceries. Who deceives the whole world by his wonders, signs and miracles? Satan. Where did they get the authority to do these things in the churches today? By Balaam, Satan, sun god worship. And the Christians go, ooh, ooh, sun god, Jason. Not my opinion, Christians. Did you know I also believe that? I have sympathy with you guys. That's why I sit with my brothers on lives and speak hours on end to them and try and convince them, just like Paul. Preaching them the gospel of the kingdom, just like Paul. How did Paul do it? By reading the law of Moses and the prophecies. But when I go there, they say, no, they don't want to hear the prophecies. That's how Paul did it. Paul says, imitate me as I imitate the Messiah. Now I'm imitating Paul and they say, no, but yet they claim Paul. A different Paul. Paul has become the Messiah, unfortunately. So, <clears throat> so the Spirit, to, to get power of the Spirit, obedience is required, regardless. The whole teaching that I just done about baptism is about it's a repentance to God, so that you can get the remission of sins, so that the manifestation of the Spirit can happen. That's why the Messiah is baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. No need for opinions, yeah, Paul priests. Only truth. <coughs> so, <coughs> Romans, this is going to be a long one. Sorry, Emma. <laughs> Romans, chapter 5, verse 5 through 21. I might, my power is back. While she's reading, I'm just going to push the generator. Okay, Romans, chapter 5, verse 5 through 21. Okay. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For while we were still weak at the right time, Messiah died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Messiah died for us. Since, therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Yeshua Messiah, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all have sinned. For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if man died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Yeshua Messiah, abounded for many. And the free gift is not like the result of that one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brought justification. For if, because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Yeshua Messiah. Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners. So by the, ouch. So by the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. Now the law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. 
so that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign through righteousness, leading to eternal life through Yeshua Messiah, our Lord. Um, sorry, have you guys been waiting long? No, maybe like 10 seconds. So, when we read Acts chapter 5, verse 1, it says the following, before you just read Romans, right? Him has God exalted with the right hand to be a prince and a savior, his salvation sin. For the gift of the repentance was one, and the forgiveness of sins. What we just read in Romans now is for this part of the forgiveness of sins, right? <clears throat> so I hope you caught it. I, I don't want to read all of it now again. But I hope you caught what it is. Yeshua was sent for the forgiveness of sins. Because it's speaking about the sin of Adam. And through one one Adam all sin, through Christ we are made righteous. So if, you're, if you are doing the works of sin, Adam, you are fulfilling works of sin. So if you're now doing the works of righteousness, you are filling the work of righteousness. That's why it says, if you know he's righteous, you must do righteousness. If you know Satan is a sinner, do sin. And even you're a son of Satan. Those who do the opposite, do righteousness are the son of, sons of God. Right? This is what Romans was speaking about. Right? And then also, a note for that same verse, 1 John chapter 3, verse 22 to 24. I'll quickly read it short. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments. And do those things that are pleasing in his sight. What is pleasing in his sight? Remember the Deuteronomy, you read it earlier, to do the Torah, which is good. Right? And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of the Son of, Son of uh, God, Yeshua the Messiah, and love one another, as he gave us a commandment. And he that keeps his commandment is in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit which he has given us. What will the Spirit do? It will cause you to keep the commandments. If the Spirit causes you to keep the commandments, know that you are righteous like the Son is righteous. Because now you do the works of righteousness. <laughs> Simple, huh? The example for that, is Acts chapter, chapter 10 in Cornelius. That's the example. Go read it. He was a Gentile. He was God-fearing. He kept the law. And then obedience. And then they get the... They, they, so they had the repentance. They turn to God. They keep the law. And then the power of the Spirit happens. In the same chapter. Right? So, what does it mean to believe in the Son of God? Well, the Son of God says it himself. We don't have to assume what it means to believe in the Son of God. The Son of God said it. It says, if you believed me, you would have believed Moses. For Moses wrote about me. <laughs> the Messiah answers that question for you. you. don't have to make any assumptions. I've got a video on that too. Go watch it. That's the reason I don't go too much into death. It's all there. Right? <laughs> So the example of everything is Acts 10, go read it, right? So now, I'm going to go to Joel, chapter 3. Amber, you can go to Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33. I'll read Joel first. Joel, chapter 2, verse 32. And it shall come to pass that whoever shall call on the name of Yahweh shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion, in Jerusalem, shall be deliverance. As Yahweh has said, and in the remnant, who the Lord shall call. Everyone who calls on the name of Yahweh, what does it mean? Remember part one, authority. What does it mean? Repentance, back into his covenant. Keep his laws again. That's what the name means. When the Messiah says, I have manifested your name unto them you have given me. He says, I have manifested your Torah. Hallelujah. How beautiful. That's the gospel of the kingdom. Scripture defines it for us. We don't have to guess. <clears throat> you can read, Amber. Okay, Matthew 6, 33. 
But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So, this is a summary of everything. Seek first God and his righteousness, his ways. Remember, he means those who work righteousness with joy. His ways, those who walk in his ways, his ways, the Torah. Seek God first and his righteousness. Hence, God calls you and teaches you and sanctifies you. And then all these things will be added to you. What? The remission of sin, the blood of the Messiah that covers your sin, blots out your sin, unto everlasting life and the knowledge through the Spirit. What does the church do today? The opposite. They repent, but not to me, says Yahweh. Remember, part one, who are they repenting to? To the Son. It's not His covenant. It's His Father's covenant. You didn't break the covenant of the Son. You break the covenant of the Father. You repent to him. So seek first him, God, and his righteousness, his Torah. Then the remission of sins and the Spirit will be given to you. Everlasting light. Messiah's own words. Do you believe him? Truly, I hope so. I know this is a harsh teaching for most. But it's just truth. Do we believe him? We can't say that we believe the Messiah. But we don't want to walk as he at all. We don't want to accept his witness. If we say we believe and abide in the Messiah, we adopt his witness. That is why it's called the trustworthy witness. Right? <clears throat> so, I just want to read Chronicles quickly. Right? Chronicles 31 verse 20 to 21. <clears throat> and thus did Zechariah throughout all of Judah and throughout... <clears throat> which was good and right and truth before Yahweh his God. <laughs> and in every work that he began in the service of the house of God, and in the law, and in the commandments to seek his God, and he did it with all his heart. How beautiful. <clears throat> right? And but just read it for me in English, because I think I'm stuffing it up. Because in my mind, I'm reading perfectly, but for my accent, might not. Chronicle 31, verse 20 to 21. What does it mean to see God? You must see God and His righteousness. What does it mean to see God? Let's go see what the scripture says it means. Right? Chronicle chapter 31, verse 20 to 21. First or second? Ah, uh, I think it's second Chronicles. Okay, Second Chronicles 31. Start with, and you said 16 to 21? No, no. no. Uh, Chronicles 31 no. was 20 to 21. Um, it will start with, and this did the Zechariah. Okay. Throughout all of Judah. Okay. Thus Hezekiah did throughout all Judah, and he did what was good and right and faithful before the Lord his God. And every work that he undertook in the service of the house of God, and in accordance with the law and the commandments, seeking his God, he did with all his heart and prospered. So... <clears throat> It says they did what was good and right by keeping the commandments. And by doing the commandments, what does it mean? It means to seek God with all his heart, soul, and mind. There's the definition of seeking God. Why are we not seeking God? Because we don't want to hear. We don't want to be obedient. Did you know that you can only enter the tree of life? You must have a right to do that. Something is required for you to have a right to enter that garden and eat of the tree of life. Those who keep the commandments that they may have a right to the tree of life. If you do not keep the commandments, you don't have a right. Something for something. The whole of scripture is based on that. <clears throat> right, so... Second, so if I go to Joel chapter 2, verse 32 again, right? I'm breaking it down for you. And it shall come to pass that whoever shall call on the name of Yahweh shall be delivered. What does it mean to be called on the name of Yahweh? We read it earlier. 
but seek you first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Right? And then Second Chronicles said the same thing. And thus this said Hezekiah throughout all of Judah. And throughout which, uh, uh, and, and did that which was good and right and truth before Yahweh is Elohim. And in every work that he began in the service of the house of God and in the law and in the commandments to seek his God. The law and the commandments is to seek his God. He did with his whole heart. And so, Job chapter 2 verse 32. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. How did this... I, how did this Hezekiah, seek God, keep the law and the commandments. Did what, he did what was right and good in the sight of the Lord by keeping the law and commandments, seeking God with his whole heart, soul, and mind. The definition of scripture of seeking God, walking in the law and the commandments. Scripture defines it for us, not us. People always say, Jason, would you make up your own opinions? Liar, I never do. I always give you scripture. It's you that don't want to accept the scripture. Scripture will define scripture. Regardless of your feelings and your opinions, the problem is I believe all of Scripture and you reject most. Christians, that is sad. If the Messiah had to walk this earth again, you'd kill him ten times worse than they killed him in those days. But he, will, he speaks in truth. He speaks in righteousness. Speaking only truth. He would rebuke this world. There's nothing left. This is going to happen. You're prosecuted by his sword of his mouth, which are also the 144, but different teaching. So, yeah, we see the definition of what Isaiah is saying. Um, uh, Joel 2.32 is saying, right? <coughs> now, Joel, uh, Joel 2, um, let's say, uh, okay, so, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of Yahweh shall be delivered. Gave you two references. Seek God in His righteousness, and what does it mean to seek Him? It's to keep the law. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, and in the remnant of the Lord shall I call. Why the remnant? They were scattered. The remnant, small remnant, will turn back, the lost sheep coming back. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall deliverance, and the Lord has said, and the remnant who the Lord shall call. Deliverance. Israel, are you awake? So, <clears throat> deliverance on Mount Zion. Quickly read for us Psalms 43, verse 3. I'm sorry, say that again. Psalms 43, verse 3. I'm just breaking down what we're reading in Job. Psalm 43, verse 3. Send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. So make a note. Send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me to your holy mountain. Make a note. What must lead to the holy mountain? Yet yeah, state specifically the light and the truth. Now scripture will define it further. Now. Go to Isaiah chapter 2, verse 3. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 3. Okay. And many peoples shall come and say, Come. Let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. This is when the gathering happens. But I thought we don't have to keep the law. But no, Psalm 34 said, Let them lead me, let me bring me unto the holy mountain, Mount Zion, which we are reading about in Isaiah, right? This is Psalm 43, verse 3, right? And, uh, uh, and, oh yeah, and send out your light, light and truth. So what is the light and truth according to Scripture? Well, if you read Isaiah 2, verse 3, it says, And many people shall go and say, Come, let us go to the mountain of Yahweh, 
to the house of the God of Israel of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways. God will call us and teach us his ways. And we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, the light, and the testimony, the word, the truth, the law and the Torah. The testimony of the Messiah and the law, the light. You see why the law is the light? You understand now? Third witness, Malachi 4 verse 2. Malachi 4 verse 2. But for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall, you shall go out leaping like calves from the stall. Are you, uh, uh, sorry, not Mike. Did I say Malachi or Micah? You said Malachi. Sorry, Micah. 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 Four verse two. Sorry. No, that's okay. And many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. <coughs> It should become so blatantly obvious by now that it's undisputable. This is a prophecy for the end times. I'm sorry, I'm just changing. I just, what am I doing? No, 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 go back, go back, go back. Sorry, I'm just changing something, yeah? If it's not highlighted, I forget it. There, okay. So, in Psalms it says, from this holy mountain will go forth a light and truth right so what is the light and what is truth Isaiah tells us exactly the same thing the law and the word uh, Micah 4 2 tells us exactly the same thing what the light is it's the law and the truth is the word this is a prophecy when the Messiah comes down on Mount Zion and gathers his people when he sits on the throne of David gospel of a kingdom we will keep the law from Zion will go up forth the law and the word, the light and the truth. Why, why are we saying the law is no longer required? Because note in every verse it says, and my people shall go and say, come, let us go to the mountain of Yahweh, right? To the house of Yahweh, the God of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths. What will he teach us? The light and the truth, the law and the way, the law and the Messiah, the law, what God loves and what he hates, the Messiah, how to walk it out. Repentance to God is required first. This is a prophecy of the gathering when the Messiah returns. Christians, you cannot change a prophecy. So, according to this definition, yeah, you can go watch my, my, my teaching on the light, that it's the law. This is immediately tells you what the law is it's the light and the light came into the world the sun humbled himself took on the, the the attributes of a servant and the light became flesh and he became the walking living torah of god it's throughout the whole teaching now so baptized name of the father son and spirit note god will call us and teach us in his ways and we will walk in his paths what is his ways and path torah the truth the light that's why, that's why God will call us. So we have to repent and walk in His ways again before the Messiah can come down. Do you note this is prophecy? Why are you hindering that? Why are you hindering that? Why are you saying that the law is evil? Do you not understand these prophecies? Do you not understand this is for the end times? The times that we are living in? You and I, did you know that the time is at hand? The kingdom is at hand. Repent for the kingdom is at hand. What kingdom? The same kingdom that he promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that we were thrown out of. We want that kingdom again. We want to get out of this Babylonian system. We want one to rule over us and teach us in, in, in his father's ways. That's what he'll do. Hallelujah. Let's repent. Let's do that. Let's turn back to him. But let me tell you, O vain man, 
should you not do the will of God, walk in the commandments and judgments, that when he appears, there will be a mashing of teeth. Repentance is always required. Repenting to what? To the covenant you broke, the law. Walk in it again, walk in God's ways. What is his ways? His Torah is his ways. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeshua is the Torah. Like we did in all the teachings. There's a whole study we have. I am the way, truth, and life on YouTube. Long one. Go and watch it. All the scriptures covered there. Well, not all. 90% of them. They're all there. Go watch it. So, my question is, and I'm going to end it here. Would you want the Messiah upon his return to utter these words to you? To say certain words to you that will make your teeth break off. It will be like a kick in your teeth. Right? <clears throat> what is it that you call me? Lord, Lord. Or Master, Master. Or Jesus, Jesus. But you do not do the things that I say. Did he not instruct us to baptize in the name of the Father? Repentance. In the name of the Son, remission of sins. In the name of the Spirit, to guide us in knowledge and truth. Why is it that you call me Lord, Lord, but you do not do the things that I say? Did you know throughout this whole teaching that it's got nothing to do with the Trinity? For all the Baal priests? But especially to my brothers and sisters who I love dearly. Why are you teaching others? That only the baptism of the Messiah is required. Only the baptism for the remission of sins. Where's the repentance? I've given you examples throughout the whole teaching that people that were baptized in the name of the Messiah did not receive the Spirit. People that baptized in the name of the Father, but that still has not gone through the baptism of the Son, also did not receive the Spirit. That all three are required. Regardless of your opinion and your feeling, I've shown you that those three names are required throughout the whole Bible, from Old Testament to the prophecies, even onto the New Testament. So, where is the fear of God for those who claim that they fear God? Do you not know that when you teach others and do so wrongly, that you will be held at a higher standard of judgment? You might have the balls for that. I don't. I don't. Did you know that when the Messiah returns, I'll be flat on my belly. I will not lift my head up or even dare to look. There will be nothing left from the skins of my nose because I'm in fear. The time of the return of the Messiah, my people, is not a joke. Everyone thinks they're going to run to them happy, clappy, singing Kumbaya. <laughs> and he will utter these words and say, Depart from me, you! Who worked lawlessness. I never knew you. That has to strike the fear. In the hearts of any man. Where is the fear of God today? Why are you my brothers and sisters. Some of them. all, the, not, not all but most. Teaching against the words. Of the Messiah that we are claiming to follow. When he said. Baptize in the name of my father. Repentance in the name of the son. For the remission of sins. And in the name of the Spirit, for obedience and knowledge, truth and understanding. Why are you teaching against these words? Did you know that is blaspheming? And you'll see when you do this, and you start leaning on your own understanding, and this is a warning, that when that heart, that house of yours was cleaned and sanctified, and you fall away again, that that heart is filled with seven spirits worse. Meaning, once you receive those seven spirits worse, it's game over. No more repentance. You can't trample the Messiah on the foot ten or twenty times. You are given up to your iniquity. <clears throat> are you not scared of the mashing of teeth? Think about this. <clears throat> Always try and have a visual example. Think about a rotten iron. Thin rotten iron, but solid iron. Put it amongst between your teeth and let someone kick you on the jaw. Let your teeth, teeth shatter. Just think about that and think how awful that must be. When the Messiah returns, there won't be an iron rod between your teeth. They will shatter by fear. There will be a mashing of teeth. 
Where's your fear when you are teaching my other brothers and sisters wrong? Right? Where's the fear of these people when they are teaching them? Christians and Torah observers. I've heard many Torah observers make this statement. Only the baptism of the Son is required. That means you're only baptizing into repentance, my people, uh, into the remission of sin. You cannot get the remission of sin or the baptism of the Messiah if you have not repented first, meaning baptized in the name of the Father, whose covenant it is. The Son buys you for this covenant. He stands as bond for you to return to the Father, to graft you back in. We can't be teaching these things. It's a heresy. This is why this teaching is so long. And I know for many, I told you for a long time, I'm busy with the baptism. I'm busy with the baptism for two or three weeks. This is why. It's not something short. When I do it, I make sure I use all the scripture and I have witnesses for everything that I say. So people can't say, well, that's my opinion. That's why when this is posted, you'll see it's probably about 17 or 18 hours long. It's for you to go and study and see and prove. Right? But here's the thing. If we do not know something, why are we teaching something different? Because it bothers me and it hurts me to see my brothers that I love teaching wrongly. And as soon as you want to go to them and say, brother, you're doing it wrongly, their pride stands in the way. And they can't listen. They can't understand. So, for you to understand this last part that we went through now in this teaching, part one, crucial. Part two, crucial. Part three, crucial. Then this. And by all of this, I'm assuming that you know the wedding covenant. You know what sanctification is. And you'll see how the prophets tell you that baptism is required. When the Messiah said, when he's uttered this word, he says, no one that is born again, not born again, can enter the kingdom of heaven. You have to go through the water. You have to do these things. Because these names have authorities. For example, when you baptize someone, you don't say, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. No, 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 Bob, please. That's not how you baptize. What are the attributes of the name of the Father? I baptize you in the name of your Yahweh, the Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whose covenant we broke and sin into repentance back into His covenant and His word. I baptize you in the name of Yeshua, His Son, who He sent to us as salvation for the remission of your sins, so that you can receive the Ruach of understanding, to walk in His way, and to guide you on all things. And you baptize that person. And when he comes out of that water, he is like a person that is born again. He is renewed in mind and in spirit. He never walks into these old ways that he used to walk again. He is renewed because you know what? When you baptize him in the name of the Father, the Father taught you first. He showed you your ways, the wrong ways and the right ways. And you chose the good, his ways, Torah. Because you repented because you broke his Torah. That's how we ought to baptize our brothers and sisters. The names have an authority behind it. Make sure you mention it when you baptize people and make sure that the people that you are baptizing know this. This is the whole point of baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. You utter the function of the name every single time. You can't just say, I baptize you in the name of the Father. What Father? In the name of the Son, what Son? In the name of the Spirit, what Spirit? You can't do that. That is not the instruction of the Messiah. When the Messiah says, go forth and baptize all nations in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, you should know what it means. That's why he says it. It's that authority behind it. Watch part one. It speaks about the authority. Now you will understand how to baptize people. Because every name is a function. You baptize to the Father for the remission of sins. Right? No, not for the remission of sins, for the repentance of the, of, of the covenant that you broke. In the name of the Son, for the remissions of sins, because each name has a function. In the name of the Spirit, to receive knowledge, truth, and understanding. That is why we do it. Make sure when you do it, that the people that you are baptizing, or you that are getting baptized, know this and teach this. You have to know this. This is the milk in scripture. This is the basic principle. Remember in part one and two how we went to the prophecies and read what the prophet said? They are the milk. This is the understanding. 
This is why the Messiah said it. Because he is called the spirit of prophecy. When he speaks, he says everything that's written in the prophets. So when he said, baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit, watch part one and two. We went there and said, where did he say this? Where is this in the prophets? We read the prophets. Everything is there. So please, take your time. I know it's long, but go test it for yourselves. If there's someone that taught something else because you did not know better, please, brothers, I don't take this light. I care for every person that I personally know. Even though we might have disagreements, I really care. Even for my Christian brothers, I spent a lot of time speaking to them. I was also there. But please always remember that when we speak, we're held accountable for every word that we speak. Meaning that if we must lead people into something false, we are accountable and you will be held to a higher standard of judgment. That should scare the living crap out of you. If it doesn't, you do not have the fear of God. Go learn how to fear Him. Go walk in His ways. Let Him teach you. Let Him show you the ways. Sorry, Amber, you jumped off now. I wanted to still thank you, Amber. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Amber. Oh, I can hear you. <laughs> no, I, it's when you left the sound went. Normally, I don't know oh, why no. it does it, but sometimes. Yeah. Normally, when someone goes off a live, something like this happens. <laughs> so, I just wanted to thank you, Amber. Thank you for helping out and reading for me. I don't know. I appreciate it. I can't do this if there's no one that can help me read. So really, I really, really thank you for taking the time and the patience with me. Because sometimes I cut people off. It's just because I'm excited. Oh, no. Thank you for having me read for you. Next time, I just need to make sure I have food around me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was trying to show you I got sign language. But I, got, I don't know how this works to get the sound back. That's why we jump back on and just restore the sound. So... Thanks, every, well, everyone. No, it was a great teaching, so thank you so much. Thank you, guys. And please, this will be, all of these teachings of the baptism, part one, two, three, and four, will be on YouTube. Part one and two is already there. Go watch it from beginning to end. Write down all the scriptures and study it for yourselves, even with more context than I give you. I just try and keep it short for time's sake because it's so long. Um, if you have to read everything in context, it becomes a 50-hour teaching. But all of this baptism has to do with the gospel of a kingdom the gospel of the kingdom is the wedding covenant right so always remember this understand what the wedding covenant is understand what the gospel of the kingdom is one and the same thing repentance is required then you'll understand the baptism and the name and the authority behind the name so let's teach people the right way and let's not teach in the wrong way um, we must use scripture to define it and there are many other scriptures regarding baptism, even in Revelation, believe it or not. I'm just giving you enough to push you in a direction with the topics, headings I've given you. 
you start seeing it throughout the whole scripture, you start reading it, it becomes clear. You can now discern. So I hope it helps you and you guys understand better. So, <clears throat> thanks, guys. <clears throat> um, I might j jump on later if it's not too late and answer some questions. I just want to grab a coffee and something to drink. My throat is dry. And then maybe we can jump on. And if people have got questions regarding this, more than welcome to jump on and interact a bit respectfully. I'm glad the study helps some of you guys. I never want to do it because I always assume people know this. But I'm glad that it helps you. Thanks, guys. Keep on. And Amber, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And much love to Aaron. Uh, all my greetings and blessings there to him. And chat to you guys soon.